Here are African fertility trends, both past, the unbroken line, and what the United Nations Population Division thinks is going to happen in the future. And they project uh, a sustained decline between now and mid-century. The maverick sub-region here is South Africa, Southern Africa, dominated by the Republic of South Africa, which has very low fertility, as does Zimbabwe. Population issues uh, and age structure, like the one of Korea in 1960, is not an issue in Southern Africa. So don't, we shouldn't make the mistake of, of painting Africa with the same brush. It is a very diverse uh, region, and the South is quite different um, from East Africa, West Africa, or Central Africa. You'll notice that fertility decline has tentatively begun, but as I said earlier, it seems to have petered out in some countries and slowed down in many others. I don't know whether you can see those figures, perhaps not, but just to show you the lack of progress on the reproductive front in West Africa, those set of numbers show you from, from the 70s to the recent years the, the percent of married women using a modern method of contraception. And it's just, there's virtually no progress. There's only one country, Ghana, in which more than 10% of women, married women, cohabiting women, are using a method of contraception. Contraception in West Africa is a total fiasco, a total disaster. And here's a similar display showing desired family sizes over this quite long historical period. And if you can see those numbers, um, well and good. If you can't, let me tell you roughly what they say, that desired family size in Africa remains much higher than elsewhere. Typically four, five, or possibly six children are desired. These are women's desires. Men's, men's desires tend to be a little higher. But there is a slight downward drift. But it's quite a different reproductive culture from Asia and Latin America 50 years ago, where desired family sizes are more like two, three, or possibly four. We are dealing with a, for whatever reason, we could discuss that later, a pronatalist part of the world where children, uh, where the value attached to children is much greater than elsewhere. I've tried to persuade you that these very broad-based pyramids are hostile to development. But I now want to be a little alarmist, and I think it's justified, by talking about one particular country, uh, Niger, in the Sahel. Um, where has it gone? There it is. Niger um, is a country that's lost half its arable land to the Sahara. If you, you may remember, it suffered pretty nasty famine two years ago that was uh, a food shortage that was only averted from being a major famine by international food aid. Um, go forward. No, I am doing the left button. I've got to go back. Oh, well done. Here, here are the indicators for Niger. It's got a population of, it's now about 16 million. It's got a fertility rate of eight uh, births per woman. Women say they want eight. Uh, percentage using contracep modern contraception is pathetically small, 4%. Um, life expectancy and infant mortality are very adverse. Uh, adult literacy is terribly low. Percentage of children stunted is high but it doesn't have an HIV problem. Um, it is indeed one of the poorest, most demographically backward countries in the world. If population remains at that level, by mid-century it'll have a population of 80 million, bigger than any European country. Even if, as the UN expects, fertility declines from over seven now to 3.5, it's gonna have a population of 50 million. What are the consequences of that? It's, it's, it's a staggering increase. It's a fragile ecosystem, a fragile government, uh, divided, 
strongly by different linguistic or ethnic groups. Um, I think the consequences of that huge population increase, and Niger is one of 12 or 13 countries scheduled to project it to treble in size or more in the next, between now and mid-century. Uh, seems to me the consequences are fairly predictable, that Niger will continue to be able to feed its, unable to feed its population, therefore dependent on outside food aid, that it's a great likelihood that these fragile ecosystems with low rainfall are going to be degraded by overcropping and overgrazing. Uh, it's very difficult to see anything but a continuation of mass poverty and mass underemployment. And Niger will continue to be dependent on international aid. Now, Niger is it's a severe case, but it's not totally exceptional. And you know, in the capital of Niger, according to a World Bank report, there have been more meetings on the problems of sexuality in old age, something that's dear to my own heart, but not a priority for, for, for Niger, I would think, uh, and more um, <coughs> meetings on infertility, which affects about 3% of the population, than there have been on the need to promote family planning. It is a grotesque distortion. And ICPD, and for all I know, the Dutch Ministry of Foreign Affairs are partly responsible for that grotesque distortion of what really matters. Is there a solution? I remember Henry Kissinger called Bangladesh in about 1970 a basket case. Bangladesh proved to be more robust than that and is thriving to some extent. Standards of living have increased. So beware of shouting catastrophe when, without allowing for human ingenuity um, over the next few decades. Well, how could Niger escape from this sort of Malthusian nightmare that I've projected? It does have uranium. The price of uranium is going up. We're all going to go nuclear, that's obvious, so that's a good thing. Could it mass migrate to neighboring countries? Well, the biggest neighboring country is Nigeria. Nigeria is not typically very welcoming to hundreds of thousands of people from adjacent countries coming across its border, so that's a dubious solution. Could it survive, as many smaller nations do, on remittances from Europe and elsewhere? Well, remittances, as economists in the audience know, are far more important than foreign aid. So remittances could certainly mitigate uh, the dire prospects that I painted for, for Niger. Could it attract global capital? Um, I doubt it, not with the very low quality of the labor force at the moment. It's landlocked, which is another disadvantage. It's got a fragile government.